<laughs> Welcome to TGIF. It's your girl, Claudia Jordan. We were just being shady before we got on the air. We stopped talking trash right when they said three, two, one. Well, it's Friday. We are back with a brand new episode of TGIF. We're here to spill the tea and break down all the big headlines, everything that y'all talk about on social media. So sit back, relax, get you something to drink, and we're going to have a good old time. Okay, please welcome the fabulous co-host. Please welcome Al Reynolds. What's up, Al? What's going on, Claudia? You out there in L.A., huh? In Cali? Uh, yeah, last night here, um, going to the Stedman Graham benefit tonight and um, all that good stuff. But wait, how are, you, how are your feet feeling? Oh, I'm so in a bad place. I'm on painkillers. I'm about to take this other pill um, halfway through the show because <laughs> I've been crying all day today. So, yeah. I'm crying? Gonna, yeah, it's, it's really painful. I, I try to do too much too soon today, and I should have just sat down. Gotcha. You know? All right, feel better. Thank you for asking. And please welcome Funky Dine. What's up, Q? What's going on? You know, I was just having a thought. We really need to do like a a side show from the conversation that we have (laughs) during breaks and stuff. Because the fact that you just called somebody mama a female. Lil Wayne. And y'all, if only I could tell y'all who mama she was talking about. You want me to tell them? But I know, no, we are not. (laughs) Shut your mouth. We are not going to the next thing, Claudia. Look at my mouth. <laughs> <laughs> well, it is too. hilarious. <laughs> you know what, Funky? Funky, one thing, Funky, one thing that we do have to do is uh, give a shout out to the Sigma Gamma Rose, right? Aren't they celebrating their 100th birthday tomorrow? The Sigma Gamma Rose in the Divine Nine? I don't know them. I don't know them either. I only know the Alphas and the Qs in the Cavs. Hold on, let me, I think I'm pretty sure we'll follow and the Deltas up. Deltas and the AKs. Is that like a second tier? Ooh, I've been hit. Is that like non-union extra? Is that junior varsity when it comes to fraternities? No, no, okay. not at all. I just know they're, the- they're usually very strong, dedicated women. Um, the colleges that I've gone know. to, they usually are the better steppers. Um, and they're really active. They really have a strong voice in the community, and they actually put their money where their mouth is. is it's my experience with the Sigma Gamma Rose. Oh, okay. My oh, Sigma Gamma Rose. I thought you said somebody else. My bad. I'm high. That's my excuse for tonight. Okay. So, <laughs> what y'all sipping on tonight? <laughs> oh, they're celebrating a hundred years. So, uh, congratulations. Or uh, what is that? Happy birthday or whatever centennial to the beautiful ladies of Sigma Gamma Rho. Also, um, yeah, happy anniversary. Is it anniversary? Anniversary? Founders? I don't know. Yeah, anniversary, birthday. Justin in the comments is like, Lord, keep going. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't, I didn't pleasure. I have, I'm ignorant to all of that stuff. I don't know. So- well, random trivia, since we're talking about SG Rose, they named Brownstone honorary members. So if you go on Nikki Gilbert's uh, Instagram, for those who are interested, she's got her Sigma Gamma Rho nail you on and she's so happy to be a Sigma Gamma Rho. So shouts out to to Nikki Gilbert, um, Brownstone. If you love me, say it. Very nice. Um, You know, we also cannot start the show without, um, I won't say a shout out, but just paying tribute to Takeoff, who was laid to rest today. And they had a huge service for him today. I heard Offset was extremely, and of course, um, understandably very upset and could barely speak. So rest in paradise rest in peace to him that's so sad all right are you guys uh have any plans for this weekend no uh, um i think i'm just gonna chill i'm I'm headed to salt lake city tomorrow so salt lake city fans come check me out in salt lake city um you can check on my instagram and i'll tell you exactly where i'll be located Okay, you on a little tour now? <laughs> I told you I was an escort. Yeah, getting that. <laughs> you know Christmas is around the corner. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you getting that the Mormon checks, huh? Mm-hmm. I gotta get the mm-hmm. Mormon checks. Okay, well, wear your white t- t-shirt, your white shirt, and your your khaki pants. I know they love that. I think that's sexy. All right, y'all. Let's get into the show. Y'all drinking anything? I'm drinking tea. Uh, sweet tea, water. Oh, everybody's on antibiotics today. Okay. <laughs> Moving on. Oh, I don't want to do this segue. Never mind. Portia Williams went on Instagram and mistakenly reveals what people are assuming is her wedding dress. Take a look. It's easy. What the? Take it down. 
someone posted on the comment section. I'm glad it got revealed. Please buy, find another one. <laughs> Here's another comment. If she didn't say anything, nobody would have thought that was a wedding dress. Um, are you guys here for what might be Porsche's wedding dress with a non-traditional, different kind of color? Q, what do you think about this? Well, you know, I, my, my assumption is that that is going to be for her African-themed wedding. Mm -hmm. um, I've never attended an a African wedding, but I've seen them on television and they appear to be a lot of fun and they don't do the whole white like we do in America and uh, in other places. So for the theme, I think it's beautiful. It's giving, you know, um, Kiki Shepard tea. I'm glad it got revealed. Please buy, find another one. <laughs> What's happening? Here's another comment. If she didn't say anything, no. Well, it was given Kiki Shepard, Showtime at the Apollo, feathers, um, like Aretha Franklin said, gowns, nice gowns. Uh, but it, it was a cute dress. Al, what you think? Well, you know, actually, cute. that's not true. So Nigerians, specifically in their weddings, they have two ceremonies. So the first ceremony is very festive and lots of color. And I'm assuming if that red dress was, in fact, her wedding dress, then that was her first ceremony uh, wedding dress. Now, the second ceremony is a very religious ceremony. And that religious ceremony, everyone usually, from my experience of going to Nigerian weddings, has been specifically everyone one wears white. Um, so yeah, you know, I, I, I'm excited to see uh, Porsche's two colors. Obviously, we got a glance that one is going to be red. You guys know red and crimson are my favorite because I am a brother of Cap Alpha Psi. Um, so I'm excited to see it. And I also am enjoying Portia teaching us about the Nigerian culture and their wedding uh, ceremony. So can, I can't wait to see it. Um. I, it's not our first wedding, so I think it's not a big deal to not wear white. Uh, and so I think why not have a little fun? I think one thing about Portia, listen, Portia definitely is going to turn up in a beautiful dress. She is definitely right when it, she gets her looks together. Her looks are always on point. I've never seen a fail from Portia, you know, in the last, since, since the very beginning. Actually, no, I, I, I'm not, I'm not going to be shady at all. I, I think I've always seen her pretty much hit. She, she wears beautiful gowns. So I think whatever color dress she picks is going to be dope. And I like that. Like, why wear white if you don't have... You, you wear white to your first wedding, your second wedding. I think you should have fun. And in this case, if she's having multiple weddings or ceremony, have fun with it. I think she should. No. And I think, she's in, I think that red is going to look beautiful on her skin. So that's that. All right, y'all. We have an update on Kim Zosiak, Behrman's alleged home foreclosure. Remember, they was all talking about how she's losing her house. Now, the former Atlanta housewife is finally speaking out and um, denying reports that her $2.5 million Georgia mansion was foreclosed on and sold for a mere $250,000. Take a look. Okay, you guys, my house was not sold for $257,000. If you guys think I would let my home that we put millions and millions of dollars into go for $257,000, you're an idiot. Okay. Okay, let's start with you, Al. What are your thoughts on Kim finally addressing these rumors? And do you think she's... It's just... well, I, I'm with Q on this. It doesn't matter, Kim. I don't care. First, you didn't put millions of dollars into it because we know how much you put into it because that's the loan that went into foreclosure. So you can say a couple of hundred thousand, but it definitely wasn't millions. And number two, you're still reeking of being broke. I mean, it still screams broke, like Q said, because you wouldn't have been in the situation if you had paid your bills. And we understand that she has some of the best lawyers and the lawyers were trying to renegotiate the mortgage for her and it just didn't work out. It just didn't work out. So, hey, I'm glad that she did come up with the money, though, to save the house. That's a plus. But don't act like, you know, we're dumb for thinking uh, a situation is occurring when you were definitely in foreclosure. You. You know, I was having a conversation with my, uh, one of my good friends the other day, and I was just saying, I don't know why people spend their money down to zero or wait until they get in trouble before they do something. Lady, move. I would just move. Like, th this, this is so embarrassing. Kim's not even on TV. Kim could have moved. They could have downsized to a smaller home. Nobody would have known anything. And, the, and like, like Al said, the fact that your house did go into foreclosure over a $300,000 loan, it screams something is going on over there which are finances. Why else tear up your credit? 
Which is fine. Millions of Americans are in the same position. I actually went. Not to me, girl. Well, <laughs> I had two, I had two houses at one point in my life, and um, I went through foreclosure. I lost my my shows were canceled, and I had three years without working, and I was in a deep depression, and I couldn't make my payments. Um, I went to foreclosure and lost both homes. I didn't have the money to save it. I lost it. But then I had to humble myself go back into a two bedroom apartment and build all the way up. And I'm way better now than I've ever been in my entire life. But I, ha- you got to smile a little bit of pride. I told y'all last week about this whole reality TV thing, right? Especially if you have done nothing before that you live in a fake life, you're living for your fans. You're living people who ain't even checking for you anymore. And you're living above your means. Like at some point you got to know, Hey, Troy, that's her husband's name, right? Croy, Troy, 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 the money's not coming in. Like before we had the downsize, right? Instead of, and save yourself the embarrassment. Like it's, downsizing is not a bad thing. You take one step back, two steps backwards and three steps forward. You know, listen, keep let, let, let's keep it real. Nobody needs that much house. All right. It's lavish. It's excessive. Yeah, it's great if you can afford it. It's great for those that want it. But she can still live a very luxurious comfortable life without living in a castle. You don't need all of that. And I'm damn sure not about to get embarrassed and tear up my credit trying to hold on to something that massive where she could take her ass off Camp Creek or um, Fulton Industrial Parkway and get her a nice five bedroom for $450,000. Two billion in Atlanta can buy five houses. That's what I'm saying. (laughs) Knock it off, right? That's what I'm saying. Your kids are grown. Oh, no, no, she got all them little, I forgot, no, no, she had them little kids. She had another another wave of children. I forgot yeah, about that, like, but still. She like six now, Yeah, right? I, I forgot she had another wave of children. But still, you don't need that much doggone house. Not to the point where it's going to run you broke. Again, it ain't for her, it's for us. And we ain't going to help you with the mortgage. Not me, girl. Mm. All right, y'all, listen up. We don't, um, parents, we don't condone violence, but a mother found a way to prevent her child from being bullied at school. Take a look. I planned a meeting with the parent and the children. I told them that my child was not going to be able to make it because she was so affected by this whole situation. And the mama was so ghetto and ratchet, y'all. And she was like, we really in here arguing about a bald head look. And before she could get little whatever she was finna say, I popped her, y'all. And I turned to the child and I said, I will beat your mama ass every day just to show you that she can't even defend you from me. You put your hands on my child one more time. Who you gonna call? You better call your daddy. And I said, her daddy can fight, fight real good. That child was so scared, y'all. I kid you not. My child ain't have no more problems at that school. Y'all gotta start beating the parents up in front of their children so that the children know to leave people alone because their mama can't help them. Q, this is all about you. This is you. <laughs> we gonna just go to you. Listen, Let's go to Q. Listen, the only thing, the only thing that she did different that I wouldn't have did, I would have popped the child ass too. Okay, <laughs> she did absolutely right. Listen, y'all need to raise y'all children better. Y'all need to raise y'all children better. And we don't live in an era no more where you can call the parents to the school and the parents talk respectfully with the principal and stuff. Y'all parents show up to these schools now. Y'all want to fight the teachers and fight the other parents because y'all didn't raise y'all children right. She should have popped that mama ass and she should have popped the little girl too. I like her saying, and my and the baby daddy can fight real good. <laughs> <laughs> I know, right? Al, what you think about this? You Is know, this I don't condone violence, but you know, like you said, these new age parents just, just, do things different they just they just do things different and the fact that the bully's mom the bully's mom wasn't going to address the bully and that parent knew in order to solve this problem she was going to have to address the mom because the mom is not being a good mom to the bully and the bully at the same time to let the bully know look you got to get up off my child because her and i i really like that part of the story the fact that she was like look i'm going to protect my child and i'm going to do what i need to do if that means if i got to fight the mama and you and y'all can bring the daddy in too we're gonna handle this all right here you better not mess with my kid again and so far this little strategy works mm, there are some badass kids out there in these streets aren't they nowadays i'm like we would never think of talking to our parents or each other like doing all this stuff like these new age kids these new lean babies or something else right lean babies <laughs> yeah. welcome back to tgif q i'm gonna send you a picture in a minute Y'all, she over here being messy. If, if, if only y'all knew what we is over here laughing about and who mama she is. 
She been led into this lady mama since this show started. Claudia, go I on know. to the next thing. <laughs> I'm going to watch Gremlins tonight when I'm done. <laughs> <laughs> All right, welcome back to TGIF. All right, y'all, a local Burlington coat factory store is getting mixed reactions on social media for selling two different figurines of Santa Claus. Take a look. Look, white Santa has got Daniel, Mary, Patrick, Mindy, Christian. Black Santa, he got LaShawn, he got Terrence, he got Damien, he got LaToya. <laughs> Where's DeAndre? They, they're missing some. All right, y'all, what do you think about Black Santas having names like LaShawn and LaToya and White Santa having names like Mary and Paul on the list? Al, we got to go to you first. Sure. So, listen, I really enjoyed the the effort, the attempt for Burlington um, Coat Factory because it's clearly an attempt to add some diversity and inclusion and representation. That's not where the rub was for me. So this is where the rub is, which lets you know that they passed the sensitivity training, but they failed the diversity training. So my issue here is that the white Santa, right? The, the black Santa, I'm sorry, the white Santa had all traditional names on his list. The black Santa had traditional names. You saw she skipped a couple. They had traditional names, but they also had ethnic names. So what they should have done if they really wanted to be inclusive was to put the same names on both Santa's list so that it would be inclusive instead of being appeared to be segregated. So I think it was a little bit of a marketing slip, but it is showing growth and that is what we will take. So I would say Burlington's Co Factory took two steps forward, but because of this blunder of not showing inclusion on both lists, they took one step Step back, but I am glad to see honestly a black Santa being an option in a major retailer. Okay, yeah, that's a step. Now they ought to start getting Jesus right because we know he didn't look like anyways. Q, <laughs> you like know that. what, Al, you are so smart, and your answer really did just it, it, it gut punched me because I was like, you know what, he's right. Like, I was prepared to get on here and say. Y'all need to stop complaining about every damn thing. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's a Black Santa. I mean, could you imagine if your name is Terrence? Yes, you would like to see your name appear on the Santa. But you know what? You did make a really valid point in terms of the inclusion that it should have probably been on both versus it being segregated. But we also sometimes got to learn to take what we got and work with it. And so I'm going to work with the Black Santa this year until they hear your point and fix it next year. All right. Like, how, like let's be honest. Like, I know growing up, you, we had to color the Santa with a magic marker if we wanted the Santa to look, look like us, if you purchased it from but any you know retailer what? at the time. Now that I now, think about it, though. Y'all know damn well that Black Santa ain't going to Laquan house, okay? <laughs> He's not coming down Laquan chimney. He is not coming down Tamika chimney. He probably scared to come to Laquan in Tamika neighborhood. So no, we're going to leave Black Santa and let him do it. You know what, Q? That's so discriminatory. It is, but it's <laughs> the damn so truth. It's the truth, okay? And if you grew up in my damn household... My, if you grew up in my house, Santa didn't damn exist, okay? My parents said they worked too damn hard to be giving credit to damn Santa. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Just well, like the two fairy, right? Right. <laughs> I mean, it is a step in the right direction because at least we, we used to never see black Santas around. It was like a big deal about it. And it's funny that there's so much controversy over these fictitious characters like the Little Mermaid, Santa Claus that such a thing is being made about it. But I, I think it's important for black kids to see a black Santa. And 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 yeah, the list, the list could have had both types of names on both lists. There's nothing white Santa can't come to a black house and black Santa can't go to a white house. You know what I mean? Not and we need to see a black we need to see a black Santa in the malls too. Because when yeah. I was growing up, you always had to go tell the white Santa what you wanted for Christmas. I think we need some representation in the malls, which I, I hear it's happening. Y'all know if y'all seen that fat Johnny white man walking through the black neighborhood, y'all gonna think he did a back crack. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> and not deliver kills. So stop, stop it. <laughs> I, did y'all, I never felt that going to sit on Santa Claus's lap in the mall. And I, even as a kid, I used to think, once I found out Santa wasn't real, what would make you want to sign up for that job? You got to be a pervert, right? Like, I want all these little kids to come sit on my lap. Some of them pee on my lap. Isn't that weird? 
No. I mean, maybe just to spread joy. Something yeah, I thought it like, to spread joy. Sex offenders. Like sex offenders. Sex offenders. I'm sure they're not saying, I'm sure they do a double background screening on those people. (laughs) (laughs) I don't know. All right, y'all. On a recent episode of Love and Hip Hop Atlanta, Erica Mena broke down in tears after learning that Safari was only ordered to pay her $4,305 a month in child support. Erica said, are you bleeping kidding me? Now all this financial burden with my children is on me? That's not even fair. Like, he doesn't have to pay none of it. This is bleeped up. Bunky, now you had a lot to say about this story. What are your thoughts? Ain't no all that financial burden. Let me tell you something, Erica. You being, you, you, you know, it's so funny. These people get in entertainment, they get on these reality TV shows, and they lose touch with reality. Now, when I went to Florida State University and got my degree in economics, some people ain't teach me shit about divorce proceedings. But I know enough to know that the court takes your income and they take, you know, whatever the, the percentage is of your income and they deem that necessary for child support. Here's the thing. Somebody of Erica Mena status was already going to be living in a two or three bedroom condo, house, apartment, town home, whatever the case may be. You was already going to have to pay rent regardless. OK, you are already going to have to pay your own car note regardless. If you can't make it happen with four thousand dollars for two kids, um, something is really wrong with you and your arithmetic skills. Just like we just said with Kim Zosiak, you need to downgrade your lifestyle. She's not disappointed at the amount of money that she's getting. She's disappointed at the fact that she thought she was going to be sitting high on the hall collecting ten and fifteen thousand dollars because she's pretty per month. Or whatever, and I think this is a slap in the face to working class mothers and mothers that are out there doing it on their own that wish they had four thousand dollars a month um, um, in damn child support. You know how much child support my mama got my, in, in 1983 when my daddy divorced my mama. She got a hundred and fifty dollars. Okay, my and father. My mother, had to pay- and, and my father, my, my mother opted to never take my father back to get an increase because she said you get more out of a man when you work with him or whatever the case may be. And obviously he gave her more. But the point is, there are people out there getting $250 a month, Erica, and making it do what it do. So shut the hell up and and take your $4,000 and and be on your way. My dad had to pay $75 a week and he was sometimes not paid. (laughs) But it was also based on him when he was on unemployment. And then when he went back to work, my mother never took him back to court. Al, 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 what do you think about this story? You know, I, I, a lot of this I felt like from Erica was for television because if this episode, Erica stayed crying. She stayed crying. She's been crying for two seasons now. Um, you know, when it comes to the courts, Erica and Safari live in Georgia. Georgia uses the income shares model, and, and, and that's what it is. So the Georgia, the courts looked at the total amount the parents would spend on the child as a family, as an intact family unit, then they take into consideration how much each parent makes, and that's how they get the number. Now, Miss Erica Mena, allegedly, according to Yahoo Entertainment, is making millions over there on OnlyFans, way bigger millions than Safari is on his OnlyFans, and allegedly she's making more money on Real Housewives of Atlanta, I mean, uh, Love and Hip Hop Mm -hmm. uh, Atlanta than, well, it's Miami now, than Safari. So it only makes sense that he would only be paying four thousand dollars there's a formula to this you knew the formula going into it and you got the number based on the formula coming out of it those duck and those crocodile tears have got to go i think she's just frustrated just from how hurt she is with their relationship the way it turned out i had to watch the season because like again i had to host that reunion i had to watch all of it and she seemed really genuinely hurt about how it all ended up i think she thought this one was really going to be the one i think i it's supposed to be a percentage, right? And they do have that calculator and they figure it out. But the fact is, she does make more money. She is far more successful than Safari. Right. She, is, she is richer than him. I get the frustration in this regard. If your babies are by a guy that spends and flosses jewelry and furs and all kinds of things, and then you find out that's your amount, I would be a little irritated now, regardless. Let me use a fake word. Irregardless. Irregardless. Uh, irregardless. <laughs> 
of of the formula. I, I I always come from the emotional part. I'm just trying to think like how she feels. But uh, yeah, of course you can. But you can't. You both can't be flossing. You can't be both flossing and lying about your real life. And then when you get real life results, you're like, oh, don't take into take into account the flossing too. No, that's not how this works. That's not how this works. On the gram, you're flossing like you have all this, but we know what's really going on behind closed doors. And the fact is, the courts do too. And that's why you're only getting four thousand dollars. Okay. And, and we can't say, no, no, no. I, I don't like that only getting $4,000. Well, $4, you know. $4,000 I mean. is a lot of money. That is a lot. There of money. are people with college degrees that don't make $4,000 a month salary. Right. That's a lot of money. Kids. That's a I lot of money in addition to what you're already making. I'm sorry. This is rich people problems. I don't feel no way higher for her at all. Let me move on. All right, Dustin of El Paso. I couldn't finish my thought, y'all. And you know oh, I can't sorry. stay on track with my painkillers. Al, stop cutting me off. Let me finish. I'm old. You got to take your, you gotta pay, take your painkillers and your brain pills. Uh, you got to take, take them both. That, she can't take all that stuff together. We might find her ass in the bathtub. Exactly. All that stuff. You can't interrupt the old lady talking because she's going to forget what she had to say. Now, let me go ahead and get back on this. Uh, dozens of El Paso, Texas high school seniors may have to retake their SAT scores after their answer sheets flew out of a UPS truck. That is so messed up. The El Paso Independent School District said it's working with the college board to determine a remedy for the students whose SAT exams were lost in transit after they were securely submitted to UPS. This is super messed up. Imagine you studied for this thing or paid someone or cheated and then you got to take this thing again. Q, what you think about this? Has this ever happened to you at Florida State University? No, it did not. And based on my SAT score, my ass better be glad I got into Florida State University. Okay? <laughs> Let me tell you something. That test was so goddamn long. Towards the end of it, I just started Christmas tree in it. And so I uh, I think my SAT score was like a 980. I didn't score super high on the SAT. It was enough. Thankfully, my GPA was high. But here is what I think the remedy should be. I think that because that test is so damn long and that those kids did do it, I think that they should issue them a, 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 a median score or average score. And then they have the option to either roll with that score or if they want to take it again because they think they can do higher. And I think I think that's fair. OK, Al, what do you think? Absolutely not. Absolutely not, Q. That boy, cut it out. That's why your score was 900. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely not. Now, this is this is very interesting. I think somebody needs to be held liable. And as far as I'm concerned, it, it could be it should be UPS. And let me tell you why. El Paso, Texas is the fourth least, the fourth highest uneducated city in the country. So the fact that all of these people are trying to do better and go take the SAT so that they can go to college to provide a better way for their families, and then you're going to mess it up. They allegedly found all of them or were able to recover all of them, but 50. So I think UPS should start a scholarship for those 50 individuals. They should start a scholarship to give them the money to whether they go to a junior college or to college. They should also pay for their retesting fee. And honestly, they need to do better. This all needs to be automated. If we can automate everything else, then we need to stop coloring in bubbles and hitting a, and stroking a key. And in fact, we need to do it for my homes if you really want, or for my handhelds if you really want my opinion, and get your results real time. They need to do away with SATs anyways, because they have been proven that they're racially biased and they do not favor ki children of color anyways. Like it's definitely harder for us. So the, t the questions they ask, it, the whole system needs to be redone. All right, y'all, quick commercial break. We'll be back with more TJF and a reminder, it is Friday. So we want your questions for the end of the show. Make sure you throw in your questions in the chat and we will answer them as many as we can at the end of the show. We'll be right back. Welcome back to TGIF. We were talking off camera real quick. I feel scammed bamboozles. Why, why did they make it be such a big deal that we had to know what pi equals 3.14 and all this other nonsense that we have never used ever again? What is trigonometry? <laughs> like, what is that? <laughs> like, what is it? How is it applicable to anybody's everyday life? Uh, calculus. I mean, I have never used calculus. I've used a calculator, but I've never used calculus, trigonometry, none of that mess. 
my head used to hurt with all that tricky math. I'm like, what am I using this for? Okay. <laughs> okay. Um, and then some of the trapezoid. Uh, okay. What's a, I've never used trapezoid after I got out of high school. Do y'all say trapezoid? No. Say trapezoid? Who says octagon? We call it a stop sign. <laughs> it's shaped like a stop sign. Like that's what we say. They need to teach people how to file their taxes and balance their checkbook. That part. And, yeah, how, to, and how to say ask. You well, want to know, know they are funny? teaching that. They teaching that now in uh on, in the college. In fact, uh, many colleges have mandated that you have to take a financial literacy class. Um, I taught that actually. So um, you, before you, you can funny? before you can graduate, these new kids don't know how to tell time. Okay. <laughs> no, they don't. They don't <laughs> on, on a clock or the clock. That's they true. That's don't true. Know how to tell time, and, and they can't write. They don't know how to write in cursive. Nope. They don't know how to write in cursive. Yeah. I had a kid tell me, a guy told me that uh, you can catch cancer. Like if someone has catch cancer and they sneeze, like it's contagious. I'm like, what? That was in the California, the Los Angeles school department. That Ooh. their schooling is, sorry, their public schools need a lot of work. They may look good, but they don't, they don't know shit. All right, y'all. <laughs> We're going to try something new. Let's talk about our tea bag of the day. This is where we respectfully call out celebrities and everyday people who, in our opinion, have done something ridiculous. Today's tea bag of the day goes to Donald Trump. Sources report that next week, Trump hopes to announce a third consecutive run for president, but his inner circle is cautioning him to wait until after the Senate runoff in Georgia on December 6th to make his argument. What are y'all's thoughts on Donald Trump's hopes to run for president for the third time? Whoever wants to go first. I think the wrong Trump fell down the stairs, to be quite <laughs> honest. I think the wrong Trump fell down the stairs. I don't understand. Listen, you know, I, I was at the uh, somewhere, somewhere, uh, uh, doctor's office or something the other day. I don't understand how the people come to your house and carry boxes of files from the White House out your house as if it's your Christmas album and you are still running free. I just don't understand it. And this man has already sliced this country in more pieces than a damn pie. And I promise y'all, I can't do another tense political season like we did when he was running before. I will be moving to Mexico. I hear that. Al, what do you think about our tea bag of the day? Yeah, I, I just don't. I mean, I feel like this. I'm with Q on this one. Like, how do you commit uh, tax fraud, money fraud, money laundering, have all these cases against you and still are able to carouse millions and millions and millions and millions of Americans to side with you? Now, this is a good thing. And Claudia, you know this better than me. We've got Chris Christie is interested in running for uh, the president on the Republican ticket. And we also have Ron DeSantis, who has also expressed a keen interest in running for the Republican ticket. And Ron DeSantis really has a lot of momentum. So the exciting part about here is the two of them gaining up on that clown could be a good benefit for all of us that really feel like the Trump brand is not only stained, but the Trump era could possibly come to a halt in the 2024 elections. You know, on top of all the other um, cases he has opened, let's add rape. There's E. Uh, e Jean uh, Carroll, remember the writer that used to write for uh, Cosmopolitan? She had a, a, a column. She's the one that saved some evidence that has his DNA on it. Remember that? There's a case that he that's still pending of rape. There's a 14-year-old girl, allegedly, that had a case against him that always got quiet right before the election. There's so many things that rich white men get away with, but yet a black man, and let me say allegedly with all those cases, a black man has some dog fights. And y'all want to give him a death penalty. A black man does the, the tiniest of infraction and he's canceled. It is amazing what a mediocre white man that has a little bit of money can get away with and, and, and it goes unchecked. And the fact that he's even uh, thinking he's able with no fear because he gets away with everything. He gets away with everything. And um, I would like to see some of these Democratic superstars that have been stepping out and showing out like Gretchen Whitmore of the governor of Michigan and the new mayor of 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 Maryland, Westmore. There's other. There's some people that can take 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 it to Trump. But I mean, I'm not. 
Mm-hmm. Sorry, I need the attorney general for the state in the city of New York City to get a conviction. What else do you need? Do what else do we need? We got videos. We got Claudia says we got plenty of rape allegations. We got tax fraud. We have money laundering. We have lying to banks. We have inflating your income. You're basically a liar. What else is it going to take for us to get this man convicted? I need to know what is it going to take to get him convicted? Now we can convict everybody else of every single thing, but we can't get this man convicted of anything. And he's got fingerprints on it all. Well, Letitia got reelected, and I know those are mostly civil suits, but the Georgia case is a case that he's going to have problems with. So let's just cross our fingers and pray. Let us pray that our teabag of the week, we finally get some justice about him. All right, y'all. That was pretty fun. Now, guys, uh, teammates, if you want to be nom- if you want to nominate someone to be our teabag of the day that we can go in on next week, it don't have to be a celebrity. It could be some coworker that took your food out of the refrigerator. Just let us know. Just drop that uh, comment in the chat, teabag of the day. Drop their name, and we'll get right into it. All right, y'all, that was fun. We're going to take a quick break, and we'll be back with more TGIF after this. Welcome back to TGIF. All right, Funky, let's go to something that you posted on Instagram that we can all get with. You wrote, my arguing days are over. I simply say what's on my mind. And after that, it's between you and hell because that's where you can go. <laughs> um, why did you post that? Who was that subliminal to? Was that a no, it, it, you know, it's the God honest truth. You know, you know, it's funny because I, I can't take credit for writing that because I actually found it. I, uh, you know, repurposed it or whatever the case may be. But that is the truth. Listen, I, I am at the point now and I am at the age. I don't do forced relationships. I don't harbor resentment. That gives you indigestion and gas. Some of y'all going to kill yourself trying to be the bigger person. I've always said, cuss some people ass the hell out and go on about your business. I promise you, you will feel much better. Cuss their ass out and be done with it. Okay. Al, how do you feel about arguing? <laughs> I guess I have to agree. I have to agree with this one. He kills me with his little quotes on his Instagram. Because <laughs> I'll be feeling the exact same way, and he just knows exactly how to target in and make and just say exactly how you feel. I agree. Um, I'm not a good arguer. I don't like it. And I know I, I only have two speeds. I'm going to say something real personal. It's going to hurt you and cut you deep, or I'm just going to be having a smile. And I just know that karma usually takes care of almost, pretty much all of my enemies. They've been taken care of and humbled. So I'm like, that. Karma, karma take too long sometimes. She it do. Sometimes you just don't have time to wait on karma. You have to take things into your own hands. True. Cuss they ass out. Okay. And sometimes you got to be the karma. You got to be your own karma. Exactly. I have I, some people that have done me dirty have tried to come back around where I was in a position where they could have like really got hooked up, and I didn't hate on it. But if they would have been nicer, they would have got it. I'm just gonna say that. That felt good. I was like, mm, yeah, be nice, people. Be nice. All right, y'all, Funky, thank you for that post and uh, giving us something to talk about on the show. Uh, Once again, in the comments, please give us some questions. We don't have a ton of questions for tonight, and we definitely are in the mood to answer some questions at the end of the show. All right, fellas, get into the story. The National Park Service is getting backlash after warning visitors to stop licking psychedelic toads. The amphibian produces toxins that can act as a powerful hallucinogenic, Officials also stress that even touching one of these toads can make humans very ill and the toxins can be lethal in high doses. Now, people have been using the secret secreted toxins by drying it into crystals and smoking it in pipes. But people didn't take too kindly to the advice. One person posted, for $30 admission fee, I'll lick whatever I want. Someone else wrote, I didn't lick my way through hundreds of animals to be told no now. (laughs) <laughs> what are your thoughts on this crazy story? Is it that serious? And have y'all ever licked an animal? Q, you laughing, so I got to go to you first. Have you ever licked <laughs> <laughs> Well, you know, I am a rich white woman. I do kiss my dogs in the mouth, okay? But I'll, and, they, and I do let my dogs eat off my fork, okay? But oh. out, out, <laughs> outside of that... You've kissed some that, toads in your time, Q. Well, them gentlemen, talk, <laughs> you, know, you know, yeah, I've had some toads and some grizzly bears around here, too. But listen, if you take your nasty ass to the park and you pick up something off the ground from up under a log and lick it, you deserve anything that happens to you. Mm-hmm. Like, I don't want to see no CDC posters about we got a toad lip- licking epidemic. 
I don't want to see no, we need to launch campaigns to keep people from licking toes because some stuff is just pure stupid. So you know, you know what you do? Go on out there and lick it. Go on out there and lick it. Have, have at it. Okay. Lick that thing. Lick okay. it. Lick it. Have at it. Lick, lick it. I hope you develop wings and jump off a cliff. You deserve it. Uh, what you think? Have you ever licked an animal? So, mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm. I don't think I've ever licked an animal. But I will tell you this. This is this type of toad is called a Sonoran uh, desert toad. And it's a, it's a, actually a free high. I, I hate to know this, but, you know, back in the day, when especially when you're younger or when you're looking for like this very euphoric, psychedelic type of high, you only get it from this type of desert toad. Now, the reason is this desert toad produces what's called a boo, uh, uh, Bifonidae, bifonidae, bifonidae toxin, and that toxin will get you high as a kite, but you can also die from it. Now, the side effects are really what mess you up. You might get away with licking it, and you might get high, and you might come down, but the side effects is what everybody should be really aware of, and that is that it causes cardiovascular disease. It causes you to go into un onset seizure. It also causes a great deal of anxiety, and it also causes you to hallucinate even after you come down off of the drugs. So the side effects are a lot worse than, you know, the the euphoric or the psychedelic feeling of the high. That's what you got to be worried about. I don't know the first person who tried this stuff to know that, that you can get high. Because it seems like people have tried almost everything. Oh, if you eat this frog, you'll get high. If you lick this mushroom off this doo-doo, it gives you high. Who's <laughs> the first person that tried these things to let us know? All I'm these sure things. the Native Americans probably. Right, like, right. The Native, the, the Native, I know when you be watching Animal Planet and stuff, a lot of that stuff dates back to that, and they would put the toxins on the spear, on the spear and shoot the people with the spear and all that type of stuff. But I'm going to tell y'all something, okay? Now, don't judge me from my past because I don't stay there no more. <laughs> but I do know a thing or two about drugs. If you want to get you some psychedelics, go get you some mushrooms or go get you a tab of acid. And, and I'm not condoning drug use. That's not what I'm saying. But that's better than licking a damn frog, okay? Go go get you some mushroom chocolate bars from the dispensary or get you some acid or go get you some LSD or something. Don't be out there licking no damn frogs. Well, you know, this is supposed to be natural, Q. This is supposed to be a natural toxin that that, that takes you on a very high psychedelic trip. That you, it's, it's supposed to be better than the mushrooms and the acid that you buy because it's it's been cut or it's been synthesized. And again, I'm not condoning drug use. I'm just saying, like, do regular people stuff, not <laughs> <laughs> mushrooms and chocolate. I hear are fabulous time. I allegedly. All right, we're going to take, take a quick commercial break. Here at TJF, we do not condone the use of mushrooms or licking frogs or any of that. But if you're going to do what you do, just, just be safe. All right, we, we'll be right back after this break. First of all, you shady little soulmates, I'm reading some of the questions that we're going to ask at the end of the show. There's one in particular about Al Q and some eczema being naked. <laughs> <laughs> we'll we get to that question at the very end and give the parties involved a chance to answer. One more story and we get to the questions. <laughs> All right, y'all, real quick. A YouTuber in Thailand is facing up to five years behind bars for um, uploading a video of herself eating bat soup and posting it to her YouTube channel. Ugh, take a look. That is the look. <laughs> okay, okay, I guess we're going to play it. The YouTuber has since taken down the video and apologized to her fans. This was gross as hell. I saw it and it was like, this attention seeking is just gross. What are, what are y'all's thoughts on this story? You know, I, 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 I've I learned through, like Al said, uh, cultural diversity and sensitivity training that you have to be careful judging other people's foods, right? Because, you know, there are some places where people do eat things that we find strange and weird. And I think here the issue was not necessarily that she was eating bat soup because bat soup is common in some cultures, I think that where she is, bats are a protected species, and that's why mama got in trouble. But, um, I mean, it, it, it is nasty to the American palate, and I just wish we would escape this world where people just do any and everything for clicks, likes, and views, and let the bats fly and be merry. 
Especially on the heels of coronavirus and the theory that it came from bats and all that. I just feel like she was just uh, trying to get attention. Al, what do you think about this? Yeah, happen? Claudia and Q, you both hit it right on the head, but she 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 committed actually five different crimes. And let me share with you. So this is good. She, com she committed a crime against this, the country of Thailand has what's called a, co a computer related crime act. So if you use a computer in any way to do something illegal, they can charge you as as if you used a firearm or anything else to cause harm to another person. Now, that's number one. Number two, she's an influencer. She has over, you know, a half a million or close to half a million, a quarter of a million of people following her on her social media. So she in this country is considered an influencer. And because of all those followers and she used the Internet um, during a public health crisis, she, uh, you know, drank the soup. And the soup was at the markets in Thailand, and then that's where they felt like the spread of coronavirus happened for that country. And that country had 4.7 million COVID cases. So the government has been very strict about them and what they're supposed to do and how they're supposed to handle the COVID situation. And on top of that, like Claudia said, the endangered species of the bat. So she committed multiple crimes, so they had no choice but to get her offline and to charge her. All right, well, that's disgusting. And uh, I hope she got the click she wanted. She about to get the clicked in jail real quick, real soon. All right, y'all, before we go, we want to show some love to our fans in the chat and open up the floor to uh, let them ask us anything. And we do mean anything. Y'all ready? Uh-oh. All right. It always makes me nervous. <laughs> me too. They don't ever be as bad as I, at, the, at the end. But um, okay, I'm gonna go with the question that the producers put in the chat for us here. Okay, oh, we have a lot of them, so let's try to go through them real quick. Okay. Okay. Um, Q, where is Tony and Tony's mama? In Atlanta, where they belong, leaving me the hell alone. Jade, Q, and Al, top or bottom? <laughs> what? <laughs> Business. They want to know if y'all are tops or bottoms. I'm a power bottom. <laughs> I'll go first. <laughs> uh, I'll take dingling if I'm in a relationship. Oh, Lord, no. I'm going to say top. Miss Patty, is Al lying about his age? Most likely to say that he's 55 plus. Well, if he is, he look young. <laughs> Definitely not 55 plus. That was started back when I started dating my ex and reported the wrong age because we were 10 years apart. Okay. Uh, C's Mac, what happened between Al and Q in the hotel that night with the eczema? <laughs> so the eczema was not in the hotel. <laughs> <Exactly>. <laughs> and we were drunk and I slept on the freezing cold floor under the air conditioner. That is all that happened. <laughs> uh, we actually had a great time. <laughs> Q is very accommodating if anybody wants to, <laughs> wants to know. But the eczema actually was, uh, uh, Claudia actually revealed the eczema because the eczema was shown in a group <laughs> chat between me, Claudia, and Q. And it Southern, wasn't a damn eczema. It was a shadow. <laughs> it was something in that crotch. Okay. <laughs> Did Southern you say in that crack? In that crotch. <laughs> it had a grayish hue. <laughs> Southern for comfort for real says, what's the most extreme outdoor activity you've ever done? I jumped off a cliff with some white people, almost died. I got my bathing suit around my neck and tangled in some seaweed. Never again. Anybody else? I zip lined in uh, Tulum. Okay. Uh, Paracelling. Okay. Uh, DH wants to know, is Wendy Williams getting better? I don't know. We don't know her. Not, um, not, don't know. Carmen T says, who burped or farted on Wednesday night show? Not cute. me, girl. No, no. <laughs> Not me. You guys know that was cute. Um, Gigi2820 says, who do you think is going to win the Georgia runoff and why? We don't have that much time. I'm going with Ron Warnock. I don't think white people are going to turn up for just uh, Herschel Walker. I think they were motivated by Brian Kemp being at the top of the ticket. Um, uh, Arlo44, who do you admire, celebrity or non-celebrity? Al. Who I admire, non-celebrity. I admire like my parents, my family. Okay. Q, anybody non-celebrity or celebrity that you admire? No. <laughs> <laughs> Not that I can think of. Again, I've said it before, Barack Obama for me. The fact, to stay that classy with all those attacks, I'd have been cussed somebody out. Um, let's see. Let's see. 
Uh, Mrs. Jones, for you, Claudia, would you consider doing an app to show on your YouTube channel? Uh, I enjoyed your live stream. Well, if Instagram Live keeps kicking me off live, I might have to. Um, okay, Risa Naturally, question for Q, Claudia, and Al. What was your career plan as a child? What, what did y'all want to be growing up? So funny, when, when I was growing up, I always knew I wanted to be a VJ on MTV or BET. Uh, but pledging and, and doing all type of stuff in school, I didn't have the grades to get into the School of Communication. So I ended up majoring in economics, became a boring ass accountant. But my dreams ended up coming true in the end when it's all said and done. Nice. Al? Uh, I wanted to be a banker on Wall Street. And you did that in 45 other jobs. Okay. That's right. <laughs> I want to be a biologist. I'm, I'm sorry, a scientist. I want to work in the lab and find the cure for cancer. And I had microscopes going up and chemistry sets. Um, a smoothie, question for Q. Have you ever had a scary encounter with one of your gentleman callers? Yes. <laughs> oh, people ask me if I'm- One of them robbed me. <laughs> Dang. We got to get into that next week. And so a lot of people asking if I, what's my relationship with uh, Melissa Ford. I haven't talked to her in a long time, but I did help her raise a lot of money when she got that bad accident. And I wish her well. All right. That was lots of fun. We got through a lot of questions tonight and we got more answers for y'all next Friday. I want to thank my fantastic co-hosts, Al Reynolds and Funky Danny for always serving the tea. Thank you so much for watching us on YouTube. Stay tuned for the new episode of Tracks and Tales. And of course, we will see y'all next week. We got 15 seconds. Anybody got a word for people for the weekend? Anybody got something? 10? Get drunk and don't do nothing I wouldn't do, which ain't I much. I thought you were unlocking your better self. Not, not this weekend. Uh-uh. <laughs>